Hey, what's up gamers? So as you probably already know, I'm making a survival game for the NES. So what's the progress since the last video? Did I manage to accomplish the scrolling across infinite screens? Unfortunately, no, not yet. So what the heck? Well, I had an urge to work on the sprites. I drew additional tiles for the main character's walking animation. After writing some code, I could finally see the animation in action. And it was way better than the main character just sliding around. I've decided to skip the top two tiles though and leave them unanimated. Figured it would help to save some space. Also drew several other things like these items. A bunny and this bear. No, not this one. Obviously the tiles are not optimized right now. And some of them could be easily removed. But since I still have plenty enough room in the CHR ROM, I'm not gonna bother yet. But what about the PNG ROM? How much free space it still has? Apparently there are several ways to check that. One is to export the map file with a linker. You need to add an additional line in the make file. And after building the game you will find a text file where you can see all the segment sizes depending on your memory configuration. The second way is to open the ROM file with some kind of a tile editor. I used the tile molester here. So as you see here the black emptiness between the gibberish pixels and the first tiles will be your free space in the PRG ROM. The third way is to use the NES space checker application. It will basically show a more presentable version of what we saw in the tile editing program. It looks like the PG won't run out of the space anytime soon. So let's add more stuff. So I started making a menu screen by drawing this name table. The screen should appear when the player hits the start button. It's supposed to show some stats in the inventory. Also this screen could be used to pause the game as well. An inventory? Yep, what survival games without your inventory full of useful goodies? In most modern survival games you can usually see the inventory during the gameplay. I guess it would not be that easy to achieve the same thing on the NES, since the inventory might have ton of sprites. So moving the inventory to a separate screen is kinda the perfect solution here. So far I decided to limit the inventory to 10 items. I created the item description list in the ROM. So a single inventory item only stores an index to a certain element from that list. I'm not sure if I ever have 255 different items, but an each item takes one byte. So the whole inventory is 10 bytes. It was kinda hard to decide, should I use a text to display my items? Like it was done in most JRPGs on the NES and the Famicom? Or perhaps should I use pictures? The text has the advantage that you will clearly know what kind of item you've got. For instance, if you would see a word knife, it would be more obvious than some tiny crooked pixel art. But I've decided to use pictures. I know, perhaps it's a dumb decision, but I'm curious how far I will manage to go until I switch back to text. So I am using sprite tiles to display each item and the selection pointer. I could have used the background tiles, but they have one disadvantage. The 4 and 4 background tiles would have to share the same palette. And my current item is made of just two tiles. So that would mean I would have to use the same colors for the two items. And with the sprites I can actually use different palette for each item. Also the background tiles are locked in the grid, while the sprites could be placed wherever you want. Plus I would want to position the items on the map as well. And it would be annoying to lock them into some particular map cells. Also it would be impossible to stack items on each other. Before that I only used the item tiles for the main character only. So it was funny when I saw that after closing the menu screen, some of the sprites stayed on the screen and followed the player around. The solution to this is to set the Y coordinate to 254 for all the unnecessary sprites. They will be moved outside of the visible area of the TV screen. It kind of feels wrong and it would be a very bad idea to do something like that on some modern systems. But I guess it's okay on the NES. In order to finish the menu screen I had to make that the 
player stats would display correct numbers. But before I did that, I needed to update the player stats at the top of the screen. I renamed the hunger to food. That was my attempt to reduce the complexity, because I wanted that the two main stats would both decrease before the HP. The problem with hunger is that it usually increases before you starve to death. I don't know, maybe food sounds confusing, because you already might have some food in your inventory, so why the heck the food is decreasing, right? I guess another option is to use the word satiety, but it kinda seems off, so it's food for now. I give the player a metabolic rate of a shrew. So the food stat now is decreasing at a very rapid rate. And when the both food and warmth are zero, the HP is decreasing even at the faster rate than before when the player only was freezing his butt off. I finally added a fuel stat to the menu screen. Primarily for the debugging, I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it there forever. It also decreases now. And when it becomes zero, the fire in the fireplace disappears. At first it was just tiles and there were no effect. But later I had to tweak the code and actually stop increasing the warmth. So now, when you're out of the fuel being indoors, it's no better than being outside in the freezing cold. It was time for the inventory items to do something useful. So I added additional two bytes in the item list for each item. The first byte is for the item type, but so far there are only two types, the food and the fuel. The second byte is for the power. Since the stats in my game are not represented by normal 8-bit numbers, but rather by a collection of three indexes of what digit should be displayed on the screen, so the power is a value that would be added to the second digit. I also made that if you try to use the stick item outside of the hut, it won't work. You have to go inside. At first I wanted to make so you would have to be in front of the fireplace to use a stick. But later I dropped that idea. So now you can lie on the bed and throw some sticks into the fireplace while having a snack. Unfortunately, sooner or later your items will run out. What then? Where could the player possibly find more of them? So I started implementing items on the map. I created an item list in the RAM that contains the coordinates of each item location and the item indexes. At first, during the NMI, I would go through that list and would change the sprites in the OM so that we could finally would see those items laying around. While I was at it, I thought why not create a similar list for the NPCs so I could try out the animal sprites I had. This way I could pick the best fitting palettes for both items and NPCs. Soon I noticed that the non-maskable interrupt probably is not the best place for the sprite updates. Unless I want to have only maximum 2 items and 2 NPCs on the screen. Sure the update subroutine would benefit from some optimizations, but I moved it to the main loop. I kickstarted an update chain in the place just after the collision is handled and it worked great. Now I can finally try out what happens when you put more than 8 sprites in one line. Yeah, it's like 2 sprites just disappeared and only 8 remained. So far I don't think I would manage to write a piece of code that predicts and overcomes this problem. Maybe later. After tweaking the palettes, it was time for the player's collision with items. So the player could finally pick them up. I made that the point at the bottom of the player sprite would be checked against four corners of each item. So if the player's point is inside that rectangle, it means I can pick that item up and add it to my inventory. But if the inventory is full, the item won't be picked. Of course, probably later I will make that the item could be picked only when a certain button is pressed. So you won't accidentally collect a bunch of unnecessary stuff. But the way it is, it will be good enough for now. The final change was to make that the items and NPCs would be loaded from the ROM data and not hard-coded in the reset subroutine. Now I can go inside the hut and when I go outside the items will be reloaded and I can pick them up once again. So we finally have some kind of a cycle where I can restore my stats and not die. The problem with my items and NPCs on the map now is that they are locked to the first screen. My new goal would be 
to spawn and despawn the entities while I scroll through the screens. I guess similarly to Ninja Gaiden game. Maybe that's not the best example, but I hope you got the point. I don't think there is enough processing power to constantly update all the items and NPCs from all the screens. Talking about the screens, I still haven't implemented scrolling through more than just two. So it will be my current goal right now. Only when it will be done, then I will start playing with item spawning. And perhaps later I will add some dumb AI to the NPCs. So hopefully you will see how it will go in my upcoming videos. So subscribe so you won't miss that. Same as always, you can find the game in my git repository on github. The links are in the description. So thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.